smell that. Tis the smell of Monkey D's Pizzeria, and the smell of Admiral fans being cooked, and their agenda along with them. This man Luffy really said, two for one special for Monkey D's Pizzeria. Who ordered it? Have it straight delivered to your ship. Recreas got in batching my money. But hey, the Admiral over Yonko agenda is officially dead. It is buried in the ground along with their fan base. Let's go, boy! Yeah! Now you may get some very silly individuals that come along and say, no, the Admirals are still equal to the Yonko, if not still over the Yonko. Shh, shh, be quiet, be quiet. Dead men tell no tales. Your agenda is over. There's no possible way to stop that. I mean, Kizaru literally got one shot at when he first faced off against Luffy. And then he got turned to pizza. This is one of the more disrespectful ways that you can actually end an agenda. One of the most disrespectful things to do to a character. And I love it. Oda has been ending bad power scalers agendas left and right. This week it was the Admiral agenda. Last week it was the Sanji agenda, which I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I started to actually feel a little bit bad for the Sanji fans, I really did, because I thought I was gonna be the only one making fun of Sanji fans that week. I didn't expect the whole universe to come crashing down on y'all, like Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Lincoln, that was terrible. But I guess that's what happens when you suck at power scaling and don't realize that Sanji cannot beat King, Sanji cannot beat Katakuri, and Sanji cannot beat Marco, especially not Marco. People were going at me saying that I can't power scale, but let's be real here. What did Sanji do against Kizaru? What did he do, guys? He did nothing. Matter of fact, he did less than nothing. The man didn't even make physical contact with Kizaru. Oh wait, he did make physical contact with Kizaru. Kizaru's foot made contact with Sanji's face. whoop de doo guys. He also dropped Dr. Vegapunk and got Vegapunk killed. Good job, guys. How is that a W? It's not. You tried to turn it into a W, say, oh, he took the kick. He took the kick, though. Yeah, but he sucks. He sucks, though. Let's be real. We knew that Oda wasn't going to do nothing with Sanji. All Sanji can do is smoke blunt and make one-liners. He ain't fighting no admiral. And you know why? Because Sanji is nothing but a second commander level guy. Now, my agenda may have also taken a hit. I've been pushing the idea that Saturn is the strongest one on Egghead Island. And then him and Kizaru just had to get clapped. And no, that's not just slang. Luffy literally clapped them, unconsensually. It was at this moment that I realized I need to change my top 30. I, I, I noticed that I need to change my top 30. However, I will say this, I will say this, Luffy may be overall a better combatant than Saturn, but Saturn seems to have all the hacks, however. Luffy is damaging Saturn, but Saturn just heals from everything. Every single thing. You cannot put Saturn down. It's impossible. So if you think about it from a practical standpoint, if Luffy, 100% health Luffy, fought against a 100% health Saturn, technically speaking, eventually Saturn would win, you know? Because from a practical standpoint, you can't really put Saturn down. Yeah, Luffy is better as a combatant, but Saturn won't die or go down or get knocked out. So Saturn would win, right? That's my copium for today, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. <laughs> but no, seriously though, Luffy is very infamous for having trash stamina. He has the worst stamina in probably all of One Piece. I'm sorry, it's terrible. But in gear five, and still I believe gear four actually drains him of a lot of stamina. So these two forms, you know, it's not really helping him in the longevity department. So that's why I say eventually Saturn probably would win if they continuously fought. Like if there was an open field, nobody to help him, no plot armor, Luffy just fighting Saturn. Yeah, Luffy would slap around Saturn, but eventually Luffy's going to get tired and Saturn's going to be like, okay, I'm still here. I can heal from everything you throw my way. So guess what, buddy? You lose. But I digress. I'm going to have to abandon the Saturn is the strongest one on Egghead Island agenda and change it to the Gandhi boy is the strongest one on Egghead Island agenda because the rest of the girls say are here. This panel where they're all materializing on Egghead Island, this is wild. I love it to death. We really need the girls say to show us something really good because if they are all like weaker than Luffy, that is depressing because it's like, okay, these are like the final villains of the entire series. Can we, can we step it up? You know what I'm saying? It's like, but I believe, I believe that Oda's going to follow through with at least stepping it up in terms of power, hacks, everything. Now, there are some people who do not like this chapter, which to be honest, I don't blame him. 
I don't blame them at all because at the end of the day, the previous chapter, they said they were going to tell us what the secret of the world is. And in this chapter, they were all like, oh, well, you know what? Let's give it 10 minutes. <laughs> and guess what, guys? Those 10 minutes are going to last until September. We're not going to find out what Vegapunk has to say for a good few months from now. <laughs> I promise you that. So for the people who dislike this chapter, I'm not mad at you. I don't blame you. Because at the end of the day, Oda blue balled us, which, I mean, let's be real, Oda's literally not going to do anything else. Like he's not, he literally wakes up in the morning to specifically blue ball his fan base. I'm not upset because I really expected him to do that. Because like I said, it's Oda. He is literally not going to do anything else. Take for example, a few chapters ago, you had Sanji and Luffy face off against Kizaru. This led a lot of people to believe that Sanji was going to fight Kizaru. I knew he wasn't because A, Sanji is way too weak to even do anything to Kizaru. And B, I knew Oda was trying to create some artificial hype just to specifically not deliver it. He delivered with Luffy, but Sanji, oh, of course not. <laughs> like, come on. What about that Zoro fight scene with Luchi? Did you guys expect to see any of that? Well, you shouldn't have. What about that God Valley incident, huh? Did y'all expect to see any of that? I'm not even gonna lie. There was a part of me that actually kind of fell for that. Like 30% of my very being was just kind of like, I think he's gonna follow through. But then 70% of me was like, nah, it's Oda. Of course he's not gonna do it. And what did he do? Exactly what the 70% of me thought he would. Oh, go to that little rascal. I knew I couldn't have faith in you. You won't get me next time. <laughs> oh, no, you won't. And the best example being Yamato Fornakama. This man made a plot to troll his entire fan base for an entire year, which I did not fall for, by the way. I was trying to tell people, hey, this is a troll, this is a troll. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, this man had plotted for an entire year to troll his fan base just to take it away at the very last chapter of the arc. This is the type of man we're dealing with. You should always lower your expectations and keep your guard up at all times. Because like I said before, Oda is literally not going to do anything else. But I love this chapter, don't get me wrong. This chapter is freaking phenomenal, I loved it. I just understand those who didn't like it. And also, this is a fancy way of me saying, I stand with Roger's base. Yes, I saw what he said on Twitter, I don't care, it made me laugh and it was hilarious and I hope he does it again. Speaking of Yamato, we've got a new cover page story, in specifically Wano. I've actually been wanting this for a very long time, ever since we left Wano, because I feel like Wano had a lot of unfinished business with it. And honestly, I like the idea of seeing what the citizens of Wano have been up to ever since. I actually like the idea of seeing Yamato in this cover page story. I think that's a good idea. And I want to see some of Momo. Momo would be great. The Scabbers, that would be great. I want to see what's going to happen. Hopefully this leads on to something good in the story. A lot of people theorize that the Blackbeard Pirates will come to attack Wano so they can take Pluton. Because as we all know, Caribou is kind of with them right now, willing to give the information. We haven't gotten to that, that far in the story, but he, he's going to do it eventually. So that's what a lot of people are believing that it, this, this storyline is going to lead on into, which it very well could. But one thing I do know is that Yamato is not joining the crew, ever. You will never see this woman as an official straw hat. It's never happening. Give up today while you still can. I saw some Yamato fans on Reddit and on Twitter getting extra excited. It's like, oh my God, this will lead to Yamato joining the crew. Cause that's literally all they care about. People do that for everything. People think that everything ever will lead to somebody joining the crew. Yamato fans do it. Carrot fans do it. Vivi fans do it. Everybody does it. Vivi can literally fart in one chapter and they'll be like, Vivi confirmed. This confirmed it. She farted. The other day when we saw that Caribou wanted to join the Blackbeard Pirates, people were like, ah, oh, this solidifies Carrot is definitely joining the crew. She'll face off against Caribou and, or, or Caribou will face off against somebody else. And I'm just like, all right, well, okay. Uh, let me get this off my chest real quick. The Caribou thing, right? The Caribou thing, I personally think that Caribou, even though he's he's definitely going to join the Black Bear Pirates, I don't think that Caribou is going to be a Titanic captain. I actually think he'll be somewhere along the lines of Peachbeard, if you guys remember who Peachbeard is, but not as a Titanic captain. I don't think he's going to be facing off against any official straw hat by the end of the series. However, I do think his matchup will be against Bartolomeo. And I feel like I shouldn't have to explain that. Like, I, I really, really shouldn't have to explain that. But, <laughs> but.
but that's a video for another day for me to explain at another hour. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, make sure you like the video and subscribe. Come and join the Vagabond's journey. I'm looking forward to what happens in next chapter. Hopefully, Oda really delivers with the next chapter instead of trolling like he always likes to do for literally no reason whatsoever. Hopefully, he just does it. You know, he just he just shows us some cool Gorosei stuff. Watch, he, this man is gonna like freaking like cut to like law out of nowhere, and he's gonna cut to like kid and show what they're up to. What? Watch him do. He is going to. I swear, he's gonna do that. Anyways, guys. With all that being said, Vagabond gone.